Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a great day. Now this game here, it comes as a suggestion from several subscribers and it does make sense to cover such a game uh, by the winner of the Reykjavik Open, Baskaran Adiban. And uh, as uh, we do have time, all of yesterday's games and the candidates finished with a draw, although that uh, Arnjan Grishu game was extremely interesting. Uh, but uh, we should definitely cover it. Now, uh, I always mention this, uh, well, the first time I saw a game by Baskar Nadiban, uh, the first time he came onto the big big scene, uh, maybe not the first time, but the first time I noticed him, uh, was in the Tata Steel tournament uh, when he faced Wesley So and uh, he opened the game with the white pieces and he played the King's Gambit. So that game ended in a draw, but nevertheless it was a very exciting game and uh, I knew that uh, Baskar Nadiban definitely uh, is a, a very interesting player. So here he faces Richard Rapport, and this is the final round of the Reykjavik Open tournament. And uh, uh, prior to the last round, uh, both of them had six and a half points. So it's uh, fairly sure that whoever wins this game uh, will be uh, the winner of the Reykjavik Open tournament. Now I couldn't find a photo of the two of them from the Reykjavik tournament, but I did find a photo of the two of them playing uh, in the Tata Steel tournament. And uh, it was also in the final round of the Tata Steel tournament, and Baskaran uh, w won that game. Uh, but okay, uh, that being said, uh, let, let's see this game. So uh, Adiban opens with d4, we have d5 and c4. c6, the Slav defense, uh, knight to f3, knight f6, knight to c3, and d captures on c4. e4, and now the immediate b5. So we've entered the gallery gambit. And here, uh, if white would proceed with e5, we would go into the main variation, but uh, Adiban uh, goes for bishop to e2. So uh, now e6, uh, pushing b4 here doesn't really achieve anything for black. You can win the e4 pawn, but uh, after knight a4 you can capture it, uh, but white can simply imme immediately capture on, on, uh, on c4, and uh, as you don't really have a d pawn anymore and a b pawn, well you do have it, but it's on b4, the white knight will have a knight outpost on c5. So not, not really much for black here. So after bishop to e2, e6, uh, we have castles, uh, bishop to e7, and now a4. Uh, immediately uh, trying to break that uh, pawn structure on the queen side. Uh, b4, and here moving the knight uh, really makes no sense. Uh, moving the knight to, to <laughs> any square would be terrible for white. Uh, the only move is e5. So we have b captures on c3, e captures on f6, bishop captures on f6, and b captures on c3. And now bishop to a6, guarding that uh, c4 pawn. Uh, knight to e5, and uh, this is definitely uh, the first critical moment of the game, uh, that knight on e5 is extremely annoying. You kind of don't want to give your dark square bishop for this knight, uh, but on the other hand, you don't want to leave it uh, on e5. So what, what are black's options here? Uh, the best idea for black is to actually give up the c6 pawn, but it, it's hard to make such a decision. Uh, for example, if you develop the knight, then this knight can capture on c6. Uh, this would in fact be black's best option after knight to d7, allowing knight captures on c6, uh, and after queen to c7, attacking the knight, knight goes to b4, attacks the bishop, and after bishop to b7, uh, black would uh, de definitely have counterplay here with, uh, with uh, also having the bishop pair, this bishop on b7 is... Uh, it's a very nice piece, and uh, the, the game goes on. Here, after knight e5, uh, Rapport decided uh, to immediately capture it. Bishop captures on e5, uh, we have d captures on e5, and the queen captures on d1. Rook captures on d1, and now knight to d7, uh, attacking the e5 pawn. Uh, we have f4 here, and now knight to b6, uh, guarding this uh, c4 pawn twice, but uh, more importantly, uh, trying to reach uh, this d5 square. If this knight ever gets to d5, black's position will be fine. Uh, but Adiban doesn't allow it. He plays the immediate rook to d6, attacking the c6 pawn. And uh, here you do have quite a lot of options for black. It's very hard to, to decide what to do, as you do have a, a double c pawn. Those pawns are very weak. Uh, if white grabs both of them, it could be scary. Uh, so here you could play a move like uh, rook to b7, uh, sorry, bishop to b7, try and defend it, but then rook to b1, uh, a5 is coming, and it's a very uncom uncomfortable position for black's bishop. Uh, another thing, you could uh, try something like c5, but this would lose the game immediately, as a5 you have to move the knight and you lose the bishop uh, on a5, on a6. Uh, another thing, you could try and play rook to c8, simply defend it this way, uh, but after bishop to f3, attacking this twice, bishop to b7, now you can play bishop to e3, and uh, again, white white will prevail here, e5 is a5 is coming, bishop captures on a7 is coming, 
de definitely a, a good position for white. Uh, so after this rook to d6, uh, we have castles by Rapport. So, okay, getting ready to bring the other rook into the game. Uh, bishop to f3, it's not about winning the c6 pawn. The c6 pawn will fall eventually, uh, but it's important for this bishop to, to uh, assume the position on f3 to control this very strong diagonal. Uh, and here, again, it's a very critical position. Black has to play the most precise moves to, to maintain equality here, uh, or at least try to maintain it. And uh, here, knight to d5 uh, would be the best defense for black. For example, knight to d5, you give up the c6 pawn, uh, bishop to b7, now activating this bishop, allowing white to capture even the c4 pawn, so after rook captures, uh, now rook to c8, and after rook captures, rook captures, uh, now bishop to d2, defending this pawn, uh, but black, black can even capture it, not, not immediately, but first bishop to a6, uh, putting this bishop on a nice square, and now uh, you're controlling this pawn, this pawn cannot be pushed to c4, uh, if white wants to prevent this pawn from being captured, he either has to play rook to c1, uh, after which black can uh, set up a nice blockade, or, or he has to give up the bishop pair, and then black will be able to equalize. Uh, but after this bishop to f3 move, uh, Adib, uh, Richard Rapport made a move, uh, this is only move 17, but here he actually makes a move that loses the game. Here he played knight to c8. Uh, he, he had a different idea. Here uh, rook captures on c6 was played. Uh, bishop to b7, and this was Rapport's idea. Now, uh, if, uh, for example, you move the rook, uh, rook to c5, uh, then simply bishop captures on f3, g captures on f3, and rook to d8 with a tactic. Uh, now if white goes on and grabs the c4 pawn, then rook to d1 will give black a lot of activity. Uh, this was probably his idea. I don't think uh, I don't think he actually missed uh, Adiman's killer move. Uh, but here, uh, of course, Adiman didn't move the rook to c7 or c5. Uh, here Adiman, Adiman played rook captures uh, on c8. Now it's... Uh, Hard to say if uh, Rapport actually missed this move, if any of you saw any interviews from this game uh, from the Reykjavik Open, do share in the comments. Uh, maybe he just didn't find that nice defense with knight to d5 with giving up both of the pawns. Uh, but yeah, now uh, of course if you capture with the bishop, you lose the rook here. Uh, you don't really have the option of capturing the bishop first, because then rook captures with check, king captures, pawn captures, and now you're up a whole piece. Uh, so after this rook captures on c8, uh, Rapport played rook captures on c8 and now bishop captures on b7. Now uh, Adiban has a bishop pair for a rook and this is completely winning. Here rook to b8 was played, uh, bishop to a6, now rook to b3 trying to grab that uh, c3 pawn, at least gain something. Uh, and now not uh, the, the passive defense with bishop to d2, rather he plays a bishop to a3. He attacks Rapport's rook on f8. Uh, we have rook to d8 and now bishop to b4 attacking it this way. And now the only thing white has to prevent is uh, something like rook to d2, rook to b2 with some perpetual checking ideas. Uh, but he does that. Uh, here rook to d2 was played. Now we have bishop captures on c4 as Adiban definitely has the time to even grab a pawn. Uh, rook to b2 and now bishop to f1 and now this bishop is completely... Uh, safeguarding the white king here, the rooks are powerless against it. Uh, h5 was played uh, here, a5, simply controlling all of the pawns on the queen side, so no funny business can happen. Uh, a6, here, bishop to c5, and here, after Rapport played g6, it was in this position that he resigned the game. Uh, he resigned it, okay, sometimes two rooks, uh, a rook can counter two bishops, but definitely not in this position, as uh, black's plan is uh, fairly simple. He, he will simply move the dark square bishop, uh, make room for his passed c-pawn, and now the c-pawn lunges up the board. Black really doesn't have anything to do here, he can simply wait, uh, he can move the rook. Now c4 is coming, the bishop in, on f1 is uh, not only guarding the king, but also safeguarding uh, the passed pawn. You have to move the rook, now even rook c1 is possible, uh, putting a rook behind a passed pawn. Uh, and if black would try to maybe gain some counterplay by capturing on the queen side, doesn't really matter. c5, uh, black can even capture it. Now c6 is coming, uh, rook has to stop the pawn, but now c7, rook stops the pawn, and now c8 uh, simply wins the game. Of course, the endgame can continue uh, another way, but it's uh, one, of the one of the ways it could happen. 
So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. It was uh, it was quite a quite an intense last round, as like I said, both of them had six and a half points before the last round, and whoever won it will win the Reykjavik Open. And uh, Richard Rapport also had some very exciting games in this tournament. Uh, his round seven victory over Alexander Landerman was also a, a very nice game. Uh, so yeah, it, I mean, you get the black pieces against Ariban, and like I said, Ariban really, uh, really. Uh, it is uh, deadly with the white pieces so yeah uh, that's the game i do hope you enjoyed it uh, i almost forgot i prepared the final standings of the tournament for you so you can also check that out here we have baskar and adiban uh, first place with seven and a half out of nine then maxim lagarde mustafa yilmaz uh, gata kamski in fourth and so on and so on uh, i think richard rappert got uh, 10th place uh, here you have uh, in indian uh, superstars ramesh babu pragnananda on 13th uh, and i believe um, I believe Nihal Sarin is in 21st place, uh, which is definitely a, a brilliant result. And uh, and uh, out of 247 players that uh, totally participated in the tournament, you know, it's always good to be in the top 20. So yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank Don Dugan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.